Well, mate, if you ever want to give any prototypes away, I, I know I'm here. I'm willing to house some for you. You know, I'm more than happy. <laughs> hey, and welcome to the next episode of Moving the Spotlight. Today's guest is really important and a good friend of mine. Uh, we chat quite a lot of WhatsApp, and I will bring him in now. His name is Johnny Brelliot from Brelliot Amps. How are you doing, my friend? You all right? There he is. Hello. Of that. <laughs> yeah, do you like that? Do you like that? It's a good intro, isn't it? Yeah. See, I practice that and everything. So, <laughs> um, but yes, mate. So we're um, we're here, and I thank you for doing this with me, mate. It's uh, I appreciate you taking the time out, and uh, you, you've pre warned me about the background noise. And when you're doing interviews, the kids like to scream their heads off. So if no, no kids are harmed during the, this interview, yeah. <laughs> Uh, not by me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have given instructions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instructions have been given to kill on time. No, no, I'm joking. So, yeah, so, mate, with this kind of series we're doing here is just kind of shine a spotlight of people that we've worked with or kind of behind the scenes in the mu- music industry. So tell everybody kind of what you do, who you are, and your company, mate. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, I've been running a company for... I can't remember when I started this. This must have been like mid nineties. Oh, yeah. I started up a company, I love it company, and we've done all kind of things. We we did design to start with, and then I went into teaching. So I used like I used the same. I used all my resources oh, yeah. uh, on to, to put my educational stuff up. And then in two thousand and thirteen, um, I had enough of education. <laughs> Don't blame uh, me. Uh, so I went into so I thought, I, you know what, I could work on a building site. Uh, I could work on a building site. I could get there at 9 o'clock. I can finish at 4.30. I get paid a good day's pay, and I just won't bring anything home with me. Yeah. So I'd get home at 5 o'clock, like after a little journey down the motorway. And I was, I didn't have to think about it. There's nothing to think about. There's no, there's nothing, uh, nothing to worry about. Yeah, nothing uh, hanging over you. So at the same time, um, I, I think I was doing either two or three days on a building site because one of the things I've always wanted to do is build a house um, or renovate a house, uh, which is what we're planning to do, but more on that later. <laughs> um, so uh, while I was doing that, I had a studio space in uh, in Lombard Street in Digbeth, and I was doing repairs. So half of my time was repairs, yeah. half of my time I was building, learning to build kind of thing. Uh, so I, I've just got progressively more and more into the electronic side. So, I mean, my books were pretty empty yeah. Like to start with doing the odd repair and not making a massive profit on it or anything. I'm not making a massive profit now. No, your but your prices great. are very reasonable, mate. So <laughs> when we come to you, it's like when my dad comes to you, can you fix this? There's something wrong with this. And you're like, yeah, yeah, bring it in. We'll sort it out. It's just like that. Oh, my God. What? You sure? It's just like, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I I kind of based my prices on, I think it was, I think, I can't remember what the name is, it McKenzie um, Design, they were oh, they yeah, were taking yeah. some of their, I can't remember what amps they were doing, and uh, Marshall, they, they kind of, they charged like 30 quid an hour or 35 quid an hour or something like that, If you uh, plus the VAT, obviously. Yeah. So, I'm like, well, you know, if they're charging that, they're, they're the big boys, they're the pros, I, that's what I'll charge kind of for my normal, yeah. my normal rate. Uh, and that, it just didn't end up being practical because you spend so much time doing other stuff. Yeah. So now I've got kind of flat rate for scheduled work uh, of forty pounds an hour now, uh, which I think is you know. Hey, that's reasonable. All right. That's the, trust yeah. me. When when stuff goes wrong with an amp or some of that and, and stuff, it's just like, oh my god, what are we gonna do here? It's like, I, um, my my, you know, my dad, you know, he knows his stuff a bit around electronics, being an ex engineer and stuff and designer, and he's like, yeah. I'll just take it to Johnny. We'll take it to him. We'll ask him to sort it out and look at it and go through it because some some of them we just can't work out. You know, what I mean? it's like yeah, it's, yeah, give it to him, let him sort it. Yeah, <laughs> let it be his problem. <laughs> it's just, it's automatic. I mean, I I, yeah. I was taken by surprise with an amp the other day. One of my friends who's like kind of, kind of been working with me on on the project for the years brought um one of the new trainer amps in. Oh, right. like. Uh, I th- the York Industries trainer amps, like the, the they did the YGMs and the oh I don't know um, YRM yeah uh, yeah great amps, but they were all kind of brought flat packed into the country like years ago. I think they started in the seventies or something yeah, like that. Yeah. They brought one of those in, and obviously they've moved on since then. 
so there's quite a lot of circuitry in it and uh, it's got um what's called a mosfet like yeah. control it locks the voltage and uh, it's got a fault in it and I, I spent friday just going i uh, yeah okay <laughs> looking at the schematic the schematic is so wonky it's just nice been on a little learning trip really yeah yeah totally yeah. now i'll get that it's i mean I've, i i use fets in in my own work so you know i can't see why why well, I shouldn't be able to fix that. Yeah, it just yeah. mean it's just not static. It's taken me a little bit back that I'm not going, oh, it's that. You're just and sitting there watching it, it going, this makes no sense, but I'll make sure it makes sense in due time. Because if you started on repairing, when did you start kind of building amps? And I, I'm, sti- I'm still saving up my money to go get one off you as well because they sound incredible. Is it the, um, what's the one which is, is the, oh, it's like a triangle. What do you call it? Uh, the, um, like the Watkins Dominator one. Yes, 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 yes. That looks Dominator. amazing. That's the one I want. That's the when, when I'm saved <laughs> up my pennies, mate. I'm gonna be like, honey. <laughs> <So, laughs> Your dad's into his his Watkins stuff as well, isn't he? I, t- I, I did his. Um, yeah, he did. I did like years ago. I yeah. did it like. It, it, I think it came in at the guitar workshop, and it was like, oh, that's one for Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> so it was. Uh, that's. Class little amp. We used that on the latest album, and Alex, who was who was recording it and producing it, he's like, I cannot believe this amp sounds so good, and it's from like 1968 or something like that. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, he was, and I was like, I think it's older, mate. And he was like, then my dad said, Yeah, I got it like when he was a teenager, you know, and it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. early 60s, and. Uh, after obviously when before we gave it to you it was like pretty crappy because it'd been just old but then it came back and it's like oh and the tremolo on it is amazing it's at when you yeah. just mess with it and stuff like that and we we used it on a lot of stuff and uh my dad said to me he goes look this is yours and i'm like oh thanks he goes just never sell it i was like you're joking it you know i'm never selling this every person yeah. we talk take it to i've taken it to a couple of vintage guitar guys like to try out their guitars out and stuff they instantly fall in love with it and try and make us an offer I'm like, it's just not for sale. And they're just like, oh, yeah. well, every, every, and the list of people that want to buy that amp is massive. It's just so, it's just never going to be for sale because it's, my dad says that I didn't want a kid, I don't want you to sell it. I'm like, I'm going to sell it, I'm going to use it. So, but yeah, the, the dominant yeah. one, I, I definitely want. But what was the journey like, mate, from kind of, and how did you start to like create your own brand and create your own amps? What did you go through? I mean, I, I was always a solid state guy. I, I, yeah. I've done solid states since I was a kid. And I was kind of, I was a bit, fearful of of valve stuff because i've taken a few bites off them they run hot you know mm. they they run that nothing really kind of in the guitar market that runs below 300 volts so considering mains mains is like um mains electricity is 250 volts so if you've ever had like a like a shock off off mains electricity <laughs> that's the lowest you'll get <laughs> that's the lowest you'll get from a valve amp. yeah so I, some of the orange amps run at 600 and something, 620, 630. I make one that runs at 730. Oh, Fifth uh, tones does 750 in the right conditions. Right. And so you get the biggest voltages there. I, I was considering doing like a thousand volt one just for just for a giggle. Just just <laughs> just because you can. <laughs> And so and somebody somebody gave me the valves a long time ago. I thought, you know what, hey, I'll I'll do that. But I've just not got around to it. It's uh I haven't really got the application for it at the moment, but I will do oh, at mate. some point. You got so, you, yeah. you've got to let me come and try that when you've got it. But yeah, yeah. Talk, talk to me about the because yeah. the brand. Because I I, first, I think I first met you at one of the guitar shows um, with my dad. Yeah, I think so. I think it did. I did. Oh, my memory's so bad, though. I mean, I can remember songs and chords, mate. But if, if I remember when I first met someone, I'm like, I just, I just kind of know people. It's really weird. But my dad was like, oh, Donnie was fixing yeah. stuff. I thought you, I met you at one of your gigs. Oh no! Yes, yes, oh, you okay. did. See, this is how bad my memory is, mate. Because my dad introduced okay. us, and he was like, "This is the man that fixes your amp." And I was like, "Oh my god, my savior!" <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 just, I stood at the back of the gig with Alex Vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were just car oh, as you do <laughs> these kind of events. Just keep And out. Uh, yeah, not, nice bit of a laugh. And then came and saw your dad at the end and said, "Oh, he 
be better introduced since since I've been fixing these amps for so long. I oh, know. And uh, and that's when we met. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how do you do it, mate? How do you how do you start to build an amp? Do you take your favourite amps in the world? Do you? Is it literally I? Right, do you know what? I'm going to build a thousand one. You know, I'm going to do this. Or you know, how, how, how does it get into your mind? <laughs> um, let's think what the journey was. So I started off with that with the 17 watt dominator in the mm. workshop. So like my, my father-in-law said, can you fix this? I was like, uh. <laughs> you know, you're like, like, okay, right. I'm going to give you some money. You go away, fix it. And uh, so I went away and fixed it and started playing with it and, you know, started pulling things out of it. And like, there was like capacitors falling apart, like oh, no on it. I was like, oh, well, I probably better replace them. And I didn't even have to, I didn't even have a valve meter then. So really, I was just kind of, with a lot of the stuff, hoping it was hoping it was about right. <laughs> and I could get the new capacitors, and there wasn't a lot needed doing. It was mainly the capacitors. Yeah. Uh, put it back together. I started playing. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> it just kind of growled. Yeah. There's, there's something about the. They've got they've got tiny little feet. I don't know if you remember. Do you ever remember? Actually, you probably wouldn't. Um, back in the eighties. Um. Tandy had a little microphone called the Pressure Zone mic. I remember Tandy. Um, I definitely remember. I don't remember the Pressure Zone mic. Yeah, it was the realistic Pressure Zone mic, and it was a tiny little condenser mic, and it's got a tiny little gap, and then it was on a metal plate, and you put it on the wall, and it's fantastic for collecting ambient sound. No way. So, one one of the weird things about these dominators is they sit. Oh God, I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what the gap is. I just keep changing the rubber. <laughs> It changes the rubbers on the bottom until it's the right height, and at a certain level, the, the the bottom of the bottom of the amp vibrates just enough to give you a ground wave underneath it. No so way. it just a kind of black back And I was like, oh hello, why did nobody <laughs> tell me? Tell me Marshalls. Yeah. I had like a I had a hundred watt with a Marshall hundred watt cab for years and years and years. So it's yeah, I mean they're they're classic. The classic speaker, and I was running everything kind of uh, at full tilt, and so that was the only way I could get that growling sound. So then I get this 17 watt amp in and turn it up, play my guitar through, and all of a sudden it sounds like ACDC through this tiny little kind of 1950s no amp. I'm like, what? So yeah, then like a, a various progression of amps. Um, Phil Docker, um, uh, the guitar workshop kind of lent me an amp and said have a play with this and I had a play with that it's like a, a Polish amp kind of based loosely on a JTM 45 yeah uh, that's the best about it with that I thought oh, that's quite good and then I started incorporating ideas of that and that was a single ended then I turned that into a push pull amp and that became the BBB um, nice and because I put loads of switches on I wasn't sure what I wanted so I put a load of switches on so I could kind of change configurations and go oh maybe that'll do it so rather than just going with one thing, I wanted to put, um, I wanted to be able to choose the sound because I've always known what sound I want. Yeah. So the, these things are all there to be able to choose the sound. And then I think the studio in Wolverhampton came to me and said, oh, I've, we've heard you make amps. And um, so they had a look at this and they was like, wow, we want that. And like, but no. that's just my... It's like with all the switches on, yeah, we want that. Unfortunately, that f- fell through because they ran out of money. Uh, uh, but another uh, another studio down in Handley, uh, um, like kind of Bromsgrove Way, yeah. they 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 were building a studio. They just wanted, they, they'd heard about this amp and they wanted it as well. So I, I made one for them. I made him like a like the, the very first one. And I know he's got that one now. He's, uh, he's still very chuffed with it. It still needs modifying though. Still got some things that you I, gave, I want to you change. You gave away it. the very first one. You didn't want to keep it for yourself. Um, uh, no. Oh, um, I don't like the first ones very much. <laughs> I mean, you can just end up keeping everything. I used to work yeah. for a place uh, that did alarms, like uh, like years ago. It's when I kind of cut my teeth on design, and there were just cupboards and cupboards and cupboards of like kind of prototypes. Yeah, I, mean, I used yeah. to just kind of. Dig them out give them to people and well or, mate if you ever them. want to give any prototypes away I, I know i'm here i'm willing to house some for you you know i'm more than happy <laughs> yeah i mean 
I have, I have to replace them first. They have to be replaced with something better. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't, they don't conform to uh, what you'd call uh, any kind of standards. They are my prototypes, and I am allowed to do that. Oh, God, yeah, so yeah. So they have to be made up of what I've got. Um, and so they're, 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 yeah, kind of bits. And, like, I, someone someone said this to me, like, a while ago. It was just before Christmas. Somebody, somebody went by... Uh, an amp off me so um, uh, he's, he, basically his son wanted an amp and he'd you know he'd come to see my amps that we came to see me in the northeast one of the northeast shows yeah and so they had a look they, they were kind of impressed then and you know he was a mate from years ago so so I said okay yeah well, I'll, I'll sort you out one of the old show ones and uh, so we sorted out a price and everything yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I got it out, got it out of its case. I look inside and there's so many bits. I was going like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't sell this, but I can't sell this for like. This is a fire like, hazard like, now. <laughs> it's just like, if it's, it's left up. I just have to, I have to be aware because yeah. as, as you go into, as you're going into full production, uh, as things start to be, become more of a process rather than, rather than just you kind of hacking bits together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to. You, there's, there's laws. You have to kind of whether whether or not I think they're ridiculous is another thing. There are laws <laughs> you kind of have to stick to. Um, uh, to say you can't have lead in things, you can't yeah, have cadmium yeah. in things. Uh, those are the main two. And most of these parts got lead and cadmium in. And I was like, oh, and and the, the wiring wasn't quite up to kind of scratch. And I thought, when did I put this together? Oh, it was just before one of the Birmingham shows. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I need to have one. I don't have one. All the others are, are out. I'm like, ah, oh, what have I got? <laughs> so I put it together, and they look absolutely fine on the outside. And I'm never going to sell it. So it's it's, yeah. it's not there's no kind of legal issues with that um, <laughs> until until someone someone comes along and uh, I had some, one of the other manufacturers come along and go. Oh, what switch is that? I said, oh, it's a 1970s one. Oh, you get into trouble for that. I was like, uh, no, because I'm never selling this one. <laughs> yeah, this is for my own personal use. I remember you did you fixed one of my amps, and I remember my uh, my dad called me and went, "You're not going to believe the neatness of the wires in the back of this amp," because he like likes that stuff. And I was like, okay, so. I went to our lockup with the amp and he said, look at this. And I'm not joking, mate. It was a thing of beauty how you kind of organised everything. And I was like, oh, my God. I was just like, so. And I was like, that craftsmanship and just like, yeah, that. And you can tell. I, I, I'm not the most techie, as you probably. I just, I, I go on the sound. And, uh, and my dad says, look, trust me, this guy knows his stuff. Because just look at that. And then when you play the stuff, and every time I've given you an amp or said, look, something's not right or this isn't right, you'll always go, oh, yeah, well, this was a bit out, but I'll do this, I'll move this, I'll change this kind of thing. Um, when I play it, one time after I got, I think it was, have you looked at, you looked at my Blues Breaker or was it the Marshall Head? I can't remember which one it was. The Blues Breaker came in first. Yeah. And the Marshall. Yeah. Well, the uh, blues... You play the Blues Breaker more, don't you? Yeah. That, that's your mainly because it just mainly. growls you know it's amazing and i remember my, my dad around me and went johnny wants to know if you want the blues break to sound like the marshall the marshall to sound like the bruise break and i was like no 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 don't change the sound of him i was just like <laughs> do a different kind of thing and he was like oh, okay cool and i got the blues break and we did a gig i got it back from you i did a gig and i had three people come up to me and went oh my god we've never heard a blues breaker like that what are you using to and i said well that was just the blues breaker because they thought it was my pedals I was like, it was just the okay, blues, yeah, yeah. it was just my blues breaker. I just kind of just dialed it right and stuff, and had my tones right. And they were like, I said, Get, go and speak to Johnny because he he does all the stuff behind the scenes, man. He it didn't sound like that when I had it when I first got it. He just <laughs> could tweaks and change, and they were like, oh my god. So yeah, so if any any guitarist out okay. there, go to this man, right? <laughs> go to this man and get your stuff sorted. I shouldn't tell them that actually. They're gonna start, you know getting all the good stuff i should keep you to myself shouldn't i <laughs> how many amps have you got now mate as in in production or the brilliant amps What's you've, that? you've got quite a few amps now haven't you so i've got i've got so there's the starting from the sm, i say smallest there's like a <laughs> like a champ i did one starting on a champ mm. and like 
So we brought a champion, like a little five watt one, and said, Can you make it go louder? I said, Well, no, it's a champ, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's like five watt. It says on the tin, yeah. So, what, what, can you put like, can you up the power on it? I was like, Well, yeah, but then I'd have to put a bigger chassis on it to house the bigger transformers, which could have two bigger transformers. Um, and it's got to have a bigger valve in it. And yeah, I mean, the rest of the circuit can say the same, but you can need a bigger enclosure for that and a bigger speaker. And I, I, I said, you ain't going to see much, you know, much change out of 500 quid. Yeah. So I might as well buy it. Like, well, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but that kind of set the that set the cogs ticking <laughs> in my head. I was like, oh, okay. So I made I made the um, I made the Savage Rascal, and it was basically it's it's a Gretsch five triple two or the is it Champ six hundred? Yep. Um, and then there's another one. This is like the five F one. Basically, the difference is um, like one circuit. It's like that circuit either in or out. So I put a switch so you can decide whether that was in or not. Nice. And then. Uh, there was something else like oh oh yeah you, you could do various things to the output valve so you could either give it feedback or you could have like give it negative feedback so it calmed it down or you could leave it uh, raw so it could just kind of growl or you could put a bypass cap in so it really roared at you. I thought oh we'll put a switch in for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and basically yeah it's it's one knob and apart from the power switch, like two switches, and that's how you control it. There's no... Amazing. Oh, yeah, you've got a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter on the way in as well. That's it, really. Uh, and, and that's you running kind of thing. I love it. I love it. Videos on, like, my last set of promo videos on it, and and even before even before you start messing around with putting pedals in, it's already got great sound. So yeah. you, can, you can hear the pedal, and like, oh, that's a great-sounding pedal. And then you hear... As the pedal comes on, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's quite <laughs> That's a bit weird. Uh, Why does the and people forget that. I mean I, I try and keep my pedals at a minimum if I can. Like I've got an analog king of tone um pitchfork, but don't really use I don't use the wire as well. I'm just swapping out the big muff because I'm not I just can't get on with it for an astro tone from analog man. I try and keep it like one signal or something like that on it because I try and get most of it from the amp because you know it's like you can. It's normally sound sound engineers that say, oh, "Can you turn it down?" I said, well, you, "What you're not getting about? I need that crunch. I need <laughs> I need that kind of bite to go through, and I need to kind of tweak it and stuff like that." So, do you get any kind of like weird requests from guitarists who just say, "I just want it raging twenty four seven Or and if you, what's the weirdest request you've had for an amp? I mean, the weirdest thing these days is if somebody really does. Um... If somebody really does one that really wants it roaring, yeah. Uh, and then there's a few guys like that. I mean, they're um, they're great fun. It's the Doom guys. I love them. Oh yeah, <laughs> Alex. Alex guys. did. Alex uh, tried to get whatever. me to write a song in drop C. I was like, Alex, it ain't gonna happen. The strings are gonna fall off <laughs> for a start. <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, but look how low we can go. That's <laughs> three quite quite heavily. And then there's the Bristol guys. Uh, there's uh, what's Ollie's band called? Uh, there's a guy called Ollie Fox, and I can't remember what his band's called off the top of my head. And and now like what a there's another guy. Um, what's it? Um, Ike, who used to be up in Birmingham. He used to oh, be yeah. the sound engineer. Yeah, I know Ike. Yeah, I know Ike. Ike's a great, great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done sound for us a couple of times. Yeah, he did. He, he was down at the Night Owl. But one of one of his favourite things is just ridiculously loud amps. So he's he's into the Burmans yeah. and uh, and Ollie's into his Burmans as well. So like Ollie's got uh, yeah, Ike's gone to live with uh, <laughs> with Ollie at the moment. Oh my god! Ike would not be the next door neighbour. Oh yeah, no <laughs> way. That's just like that's turned up to eleven and a half, isn't it? That is yeah. I remember when he did Ike did sound for us once. I said, "Oh mate, is my amp too loud?" He goes, "No, it's not loud enough." And I was like, "I love you." <laughs> it's just like <laughs> literally just cranking it up again. <laughs> And yeah, like, there's, yeah. So there's there's Charlie who does what's the pub called? Um Charlie Actress Cole. and Bishop as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie, we did. He's been a oh yeah, we um we did a move we did one of these with Charlie. Um we did one because he's yeah. going he, yeah, he's gonna be doing our sound for some stuff as well. Um but he's oh, uh, he's, yeah, he's good a guy. big fan. I did a gig with with um I took some of my gear down to some old students that like um 
I used to teach years ago, and I, you know, you, you, you're not really meant to have favourite students or anything. <laughs> but you know, you know the guys who you can just kind of just go, you sit down in the room, and you, you don't have to kind of put on a pretense. They're yeah. just getting on with their work, you know, and you're like that. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to sit with you guys for a minute, and then I've got to go back out there. And yeah. they'll be like, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Sit down, uh, chill so, out. I kind of stayed friends with them. Like, I kind of lent them an amp for a, for a, I think I hired them at first recordings. Then I said, right, okay, well you get a you get a, a free go for a gig as well. So I had it for that, and then and then eventually I uh, said, well, as soon as you've, you've kind of hired it, you know, you've already paid part of the price towards it. So I just came a ridiculous price to buy it as well. It was already on special offer because it was like oh, new technology man. coming. So yeah ridiculously low price for the amp oh, and uh he's like oh, i'm really sorry john are you sure you want to sell it to me for this much you know i feel like i'm ripping you off i was like no you've got to have this amp <laughs> it's now yours it has chosen you not the other way around <laughs> yeah. like, so so he's got this at the gig and then down the uh, down the actress and bishop and it's it's absolutely ragging it out and i think i said to the sound engineers is we all right to run it like that he said yeah that's what <laughs> that you want, Charlie. Yeah, it's it just it's what you want, though. He, um, Charlie's helped our sound loads because he's uh, he came to me with, with the booze breaker and said, "Look, we need to put this thing in the back so I can blend the sound out the front." I still don't know what it's called. I asked him about it all the time. I'm like Charlie, what's this little box out the back? And I think basically oh. it's like a you know a XLR, but it goes from the speaker cable, so we can take the real sound coming out of the amp, and then he mics the front so we can blend the sound. And uh, since he, and he, he just gets more control over it, and he he did that, and I was like, Charlie, this sounds amazing. And my dad's hard to please. And my dad's obviously out out front, and he's like, that sounds class. And so we've got it on like all the amps now, where we can just kind of bend them and blend them all in together. It's just it's just madness. He's got the power soak on. Is he, is he using the power soak one or just the, just the line out? I think I think it might be a power soak. Um, I'll have to ask you, mate, and tell you because you know me. I'm like, how does it sound? It sounds amazing. Okay, great. Because I've got, uh, you've not seen my Fender one. I've got. You seen the Fender huh? amp? I've got. You got the Fender. I've got a Fender Tweed now as well from '96. So that needs looking at as well. To be fair, so that's going to be coming your way, mate. Because <laughs> so, it's never been changed or done anything on it. I wrote it down. I don't. I don't keep things. No, I, honestly, <laughs> because we've not done anything, I've been literally going to the to our studio and just turning stuff over. So we're, we're going to have to literally. I'm going to get have to get all the guitars looked at, all the all the amps looked at. So what with them? Um, has everyone you know in lockdown and stuff? No one's doing shows. No one's playing anything. Has everyone come to you and said, "I need my gear fixed. I need it to be maintenance or stuff." Has it gone mad busy or what? How has it been for you, mate, with the with the business? The pros have gone quiet. You know. Um, I've had um, a couple of pro guys still see me, but they're they're all sat. They're, they're yeah. not going to spend money when they don't know when they're going to be going back to work. Yeah, uh, it's the people who are on who've got nice jobs who are on furlough. They're on eighty percent of their pay. They're sat in the house, uh, and they've got stuff to play. It's like, yeah. well, you know what? The, the repair guys must be bored. <laughs> so I'll take it over. Repair guys are at home looking after their kids because yeah. the schools are closed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of having to work really weird hours to do that. Ah, oh, yeah, but you uh, uh, As well as, I was just about to really kind of launch the kind of brilliant brand. Yeah. Um, I was just getting into that. I'd just in the guitar show, like it's the second one with that branding on. And I just kind of got the brand sorted. It's going to get the website out. Um, I got some circuit boards that I was developing. That was all due to go out. Uh, that would have been early March 2000. Oh, God. I can't remember what went, remember what went wrong. <laughs> but all of a sudden, no studios wanted my amps. Um, no tours wanted my amps. Uh, the tours that I'd got that I'd kind of, you know, I don't know how I got the tours, but I got the tours. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of a sudden, my, all my income that was going to be, you know, hey, going to be able to buy a house in Barbados. <laughs> not, not true. Uh, <laughs> stopped all of a sudden. Uh, oh, it's called yeah, Steam yeah. House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a technology centre. So I was, I was 
building loads of stuff there. I was using it to, to cut like face plates and circuit boards, do all my prototyping through that. Norson, I can't go there. Um, it's mad, isn't it? Uh, and it all suddenly changed to repairs. And a lot of the repairs are really kind of long winded ones. Yeah. Um, slow stuff. I was having to learn a lot about to do. So, I mean, yeah, it's just mad. I'm not it? sure. It's just, I, yeah. When, sure it, when it's going to open up again and stuff like that, but fingers crossed, mate, you get all those kind of tours coming back. I think there's going to be a clamor for venues and a clamor for tour dates and things like we're seeing it already. People are booking us for October, 2022 you know, and stuff, and it's yeah. like, wow, it's like people are, like, pushing stuff out, not only to the end of this year, but also next year, all the festivals and stuff like that, so it's just, fingers crossed, you know, everyone sticks to this roadmap, and then we can actually get back to a sense of normality when everyone's been jabbed as well and stuff like that, so it's just crazy, though, just crazy. But you're getting into pedals as well, I saw. I saw one pedal, mate, and I'll be honest, it messed with my head there was that many switches and buttons on it. I loved it. <laughs> Didn't know what it did, but I thought I want to press I want to press all of those and <laughs> tweak it all. There's a couple of switches that aren't on it that I, I want to put on as well. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I started playing with uh, uh, an op-amp based um, overdrive. Nice. And I made a tube overdrive and I'd done all this thing to get rid of the compression on it. Uh, and because I really wanted that kind of quite jaggy kind of tube overdrive sound on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I heard like the, I heard the op amp version. I thought, oh, you know what I could do with putting that back in? I could do with putting that compression back in. Uh, just, but I thought, oh, well, I'll have to move something on the on the front to get that, that extra switch in. <laughs> That's got to go that way. Are you just constantly tinkering then? Is that what it is? You're just thinking, oh, I could do this. Oh, no, I think I might do that, actually. Is that, is that kind of a window into your soul? <laughs> no, I mean, Gary, Gary, Gary Williams, who I've been working with for... Oh, I, when did I met? I met Gary in the 1990s, probably. And so he had one of the first amps that I built. Just yeah. It was like, Gary, you have to these. You're going to be my first endorsed artist. You've got to do all these. <laughs> you've got to do all these things to do it. So he's kind of he's getting towards paying that off now. But like he's he's got some more stuff off me since then, which yeah. So yeah, it's it's a really nice working relationship. I never really expect to see any money off him. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we'll just sit. I mean, if you if you have a look on my YouTube channel, I've got a YouTube channel, and a lot of the time it's just me and him sitting down, um, kind of chatting. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of bumbling at each other and laughing and uh, we're just working out how we're going to do things we, it's just that we've got a video camera on us at the same time so I'll, I'll give him something to play he'll play it and then he'll uh, recommend so he's got a Les Paul I mean I never really thought about real Les Pauls when I was kind of designing these things yeah. I was always working off my old got like a Yamaha 112 it's one of the EG 112s yeah. like the really cheap ones and uh, so, as long as it sounds right with my guitar, I've got a Gordon Smith uh, Les Paul kind of thing as well. So, I use that. That's fine. And then he brings in this genuine Les Paul, and he's like, oh, yeah, kind of tops out. I need this sorting. And I was like, you know what? I'd never even thought about that. Yeah. So, so we kind of designed this stuff together for, since I started really, about 2013, 2014. So, that's like about eight years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he just keeps getting. <laughs> he just keeps keep, getting. Keep asking for stuff. Equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He keeps getting an equipment that's kind of pretty much been designed to do what he wants it to do, but at the same time designed to do what I want it to do. So it's always got the. It'll always work with something in between. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I always have to consider how he's going to play it, and and then I've got some other customers starting to come in now, who are using kind of dumbbell style amps, okay. and they're certain elements to playing and I've had to learn how to listen for the things that they're talking about no way so is that a big part um, of the role then for you is to because I feel I mean with certain amps and stuff like that they just kind of churn them out and stuff and don't really care about that sound is it is that the first thing you go for is the right what sound is the customer going for what do they want and then you have to kind of learn and get into their head a little bit is that kind of where you you start from if they want something from you 
But yeah, you know, what's the point in... There's no point in me rolling out, you know, millions of anything. Uh, I've, I've got no interest in that yeah. kind of thing anyway. I, I've, no, I've no intention of going into production myself as in kind of hand producing the same thing again and again and again and again. I'm not really that into the idea of, you know, a large factory with those people. Yeah. In fact, it's quite hard for people to do what I want them to do, mm. you know. You've got to have the ears, haven't you? You've got to have the ears for it, I find, um, um, with amp guys and stuff and the know-how. I, I didn't realise that soldering was such a skill until... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back in 2013, I tried to do some soldering for somebody else, and he wasn't happy. And I, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to up my game on this. And so I did that. And, he, he, and then it's like eight years later. Uh, well, no, it was, it was about seven years later, because those people I, I was trying out um, doing stuff last year, and I was having to kind of go, well, you, you need to do this, you need to do this. And you need to do this, and that it be brought back to me to check. And I'm like, no, dear. And I was kind of getting like, so give me that lot. And so while they're doing that, I'm kind of solder, 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 yeah, solder, yeah. solder, 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 solder. Every every solder joint perfect. <laughs> and then uh, I stop throwing my soldering iron, and I was like, I didn't even look then where that soldering iron went. Yeah. But it just went in the holster, and when it came back out of the holster, it was automatically clean. So I'd have swept past the little cleaning pad. No way. You just don't. Well, and there's other people like who are going, doing it, and, and not quite getting it right. And then you'd have to have a look at it and go like, "Oh, well, and I was like, well, how do you find people who can?" That's just second instinctively... nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So finding people like that is really hard. I thought well, you've got to train them, and <clears throat> that in itself is a massive. Massive task. Oh yeah, massive Just time train. as well, mate, isn't it? Because all the time you're probably training them, you can't then be working on the amps, you can't be repairing the amps and doing your stuff as well. So, you know, that's yeah, yeah. it's it's mad, it's mad. So what what's the next steps, mate? What's the obviously COVID kind of put a hold on the the branding and stuff. So what what's uh what's the rest of 2021 and 2022 looking like for you? Don't reveal anything you're not allowed to, obviously. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got. Uh, the bass player in the band I've been in for like years and years, but we very rarely do any gigs. I think we've done one gig as as the band, and we've done kind of little gigs as other things. Um, uh, so Mark's Mark's been working with me since July because I broke my hip in July. Oh um, shit! Wearing, wearing this t-shirt, as in fact. <laughs> oh my god, uh, mate! So yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I broke my hip at the skate park in Bearwood. I remember uh, you saying, yeah, you were trying to show the youngsters how it was done and you literally did show them how to not get on a skateboard. <laughs> I, was just, I was just playing, you know, the the kids were kids were down there, like, and I was having to go down there every morning. I thought, well, I might as well just get on the skateboard and, and have a play. And uh, I got a skateboard and it, it, it squeaked, the wheels squeaked, and I wasn't really that confident in it. So, um so I did the worst thing possible, and that was to ease off on it. Oh. <laughs> you know, go on, the, go on to your back foot. As soon as your weight's on your back foot, uh, yeah. and you you don't trust what you're on, that's that's. And I know, I knew before. <laughs> you were like, I didn't know that it's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jesus. I, I'm, I don't know if people make out that or that stories. Sounds like I was on a half pipe or something like that, it wasn't it? It was, it was like a one foot on a little slope, yeah, like the gentle slope in the entire park. <laughs> he was on the side of a building, he was coming down at a hundred mile an hour. <laughs> no, it was, honestly, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was such a simple slope, and it was just, it's such a simple fall. I just landed badly. Oh, that uh, happens. So Mark, Mark started working with me a couple of weeks after that. Uh, we, we've worked together before. Uh, he, he used to uh, back when I was doing the earlier amps. He, he I think he did he quality controlled the first um, first amp that I made. Like, um, no way. Uh, yeah, for a customer, like the first kind of custom amp. Um, so yeah, he he was um, he was furloughed. 
he couldn't see that kind of lasting, and he'd been offered redundancy to work for me. Oh, nice way. You know, he's self-employed, like he's he's working for other people at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. at the time, I needed, <laughs> I needed someone to open doors, and and I was like kind of uh, hopping upstairs. So he, he essentially became, uh, yeah, my support. Oh, mate. So lockdown, he was kind of my support, and especially I sent the kids off to Scotland, like. Um, the first opportunity they got to go up to Scotland in the summer, I said, right, you, you're going up there. If you get locked down there, then you get locked down there. But, it's the worst um, places to be, mate. <laughs> I love Scotland. Go yeah. see my family. Yeah. yeah great place. So, so they went up there. So basically Mark had to drive me like to and from work and all that oh, kind of man, stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the kind of deal was that I kind of, uh, help train train him up, make sure he knew how to do things. So he's progressively gone from just doing keyboards, uh, which is what I got him in for, really. Yeah. So I suddenly did like a, a load of keyboard jobs. Um, so I've been training him up on how to fix valve amps. And so, yeah, he's uh, just had one go out on Friday. Um, it oh, was nice. a hot rod and it was riddled. It was riddled with faults. Oh, really? uh, it was just, kind of, yeah. Did that, uh, is that from? Like, so did it come from Fender like that? Or was it just all over the shop? Was it just bad workmanship, or just a production line job? Um, little bit box A, little bit box B. Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw the name of the company that had had it last, and ah. they'd put um, put some kind of varnish onto the bias control. Uh, which had progressively leaked over the over the bias control, and um, and basically gone open circuit. So there was no bias to it. So the <sighs> output valves were flat out. Uh, they took out the output. Uh, they took out the mains transformer. Um, also, yeah, there were other things wrong. It's just yeah. Events. It just it would have just kind of imploded yeah, on just, itself. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think people realise the amount of work that goes into the upkeep of gear and stuff. Obviously, when you go see a band and stuff, unless you have someone like your good self, who we do, who will check out our stuff and sort it out and stuff. But they go through a lot of battering amps and stuff. You know, you, you especially if you tour and stuff, you're going on a long tour as well. You need to look after them. It's like it's one of the first things my old man kind of instilled in me is that that these have got to be kept in the right place they've got yeah they've got to be you got to look after them you know you got to turn them on right you can't just bang them about and stuff like that you know we've got to get someone to look after this you know and yeah. and even through the whole of the last the last year every every month we're going down and i'm turning the amps over and warming them up and playing through and moving the speakers and so because that's his thing you go we've got to move the speakers uh <laughs> so, so but he's right though isn't he because if the check if you leave the I mean, it, it takes a long time for the caps to go. Yeah. But the, the caps work is, it's an electrolyte. So mm. you, know, you must remember chemistry where, you, where you, you put a battery on something and something forms on one of the plates. Yeah. Well, it's that thing that forms on one of the plates that stops the plates touching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as soon as you lose that, they, they go hideously wrong. Yeah. Um, so one, of the, one, of the, one of the worst ones is like Italian... Italian organs like the Farfisas and the Vox Continentals and uh, what else? Um, stuff like the Gems, um, gems the man. Gem Mini. Um, I can't remember the big gems called. Um, big Gem. <laughs> they they start to because they haven't been switched on for years because they they went out of fashion. So people yeah. find them in a, in a barn finds or garage finds. They dig them out and they're like, oh, I switch it on. It works, yeah. It works for you know for the five minutes where they're demonstrating it to someone, and then the person gets it home, fires it up again, and next thing they can hear is like a yeah. noise, and you have to open up the power supply and like the old Italian capacitors, they you know like a spray snow yeah that you uh, Christmas time put on it. It's like somebody's just got a can of that going like oh you know what <laughs> like power supply and you go like, it's like this is dead. Think, people generally think it's just a case of repairing the parts, but something like that, you've got to take everything out. Yeah. First, stick it in the sink and get your 
get your brushes on because you've got like boracic acid yeah. you've got uh all kind of um chloro chlorocarbons fluorocarbons you know that kind of stuff in there just yeah. all needs cleaning out and everything's contaminated and that's before you've even started replacing everything it's so, it's, so destroyed yeah. as well when I, i've had a couple of amps normally normally the marshall head and normally because they're just ridiculously unreliable sometimes I went on tour with um, Brian Downey from Thin Lizzy and his band, and I'm in Scotland, and my amp literally just went. <laughs> I was like, ah, it must be fuses, must be something. So I got no fuses are fine, something like that. Just like it's just completely gone. Luckily, the sound engineer said, "Look, it's just whack you through the PA, go through your pedal board, so you can kind of continue on, and I'll feed it back through." So we managed to finish the gig. But having someone like yourself and and your organisation to go to and go, God, I don't know what's wrong with it. You know, and I'm lucky. My my dad can kind of work most things out. And goes, I think it's this, this, and this. But there you go, kind of thing. Um, but it's just invaluable. Yeah. It's just invaluable coming to you and going, mate. I, in all honesty, don't know what the hell's gone on with this. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> can you look at that? <laughs> can you fix that? So, it's um, I'm forever grateful, mate. To be honest, to have you uh, in our corner with that stuff. So yeah. It's like we said for about the last five seconds, we lost, I lost connection. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, mate! Oh, I, I said really nice things about you. I said, <laughs> I said, I said loads of nice things about you and everything. It was like really nice. So yeah, you'll have to watch it back and be like, oh wow, that's what he said. <laughs> I was just being nice to you, mate. Don't worry. But no, the um. So yeah, so hopefully, mate, with the tours coming back in and stuff like that for you, it will be, uh, it will be getting you back on where you need to be so where do people need to go mate what's the website how do they how do they check out all those beautiful amps and pedals and your repair work where do they need to go okay so it depends what you want to do they're ah. it's, they're kind of two separate businesses um my well, one business owes my other business quite a lot because <laughs> um yeah uh, so works. the repairs yeah and i have to book i have to book time from my repair business to do to do brilliant amps um it's we're at loveit.com so it's l-u-v-v-i-t.com or you can get to it through tlc i think it's dash amplifiers.co.uk that's the one i go to (laughs) Uh, so those two you repair ones and you'll be able to i think there's a list of clients there yeah yeah and uh amps so the other side of it the the kind of design side, the pedals, the the custom amps. That's uh, www.brelliot.com. Cool. Uh, and yeah, cool. You can navigate all your way through it, uh, through 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 all that. We've just added a load of uh, video clips. Uh, They're really cool. Uh, one of uh, yeah, what it was one of my customers. Now one of my friends. Uh, uh, can't remember that. Danny Pullar, he's uh, he's from the band uh, Roulette Waltz. Nice. Uh, so they're, they're an amazing band. Um, he's been doing my video and he's been doing my website. And he, you'll notice he's uh, he's suddenly acquired quite a lot of brilliant gear uh, quite recently. <laughs> As payment, yeah. That's how it works, though, isn't it? That's how it works, you know. So it's like. I can't afford to suddenly like, especially in this time. I can't suddenly afford to shell out a few grand to to buy things. So like, yeah, all of all of his amps are fixed. He's got a keyboard coming in, and oh, yeah, he's got a got it's got the top spec. Um, I think it's called the called the Doom Bastard. <laughs> I love your names yeah, and this. stuff. I go through it. I was looking at the videos and stuff and looking at the names of them. It was amazing. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> this is class. I one called the FRO, which uh, you kind of have to ask uh, about one mate, day. <laughs> I, I will. Yeah, not on this video. Not suitable for kids. No, I, so, <laughs> I'll... Um, um, now, it, the thing is, mate, with the names and stuff, you think, oh, Doom Bastard, jeez, that's a bit hard. And then you listen to it. All right, that, yeah, that makes sense. It's, uh, <laughs> that makes sense what it's called that now. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, I wonder if you can put sixty-five, fifty valves in there and see how. Yeah, oh, that's quite loud. Oh, I wonder. If, it's not quite doomy enough, though. Yeah, how do we make <laughs> this yeah. doomier? Yes, it's for that. Amazing. So, yeah, as good. That's class, mate. No, I'll stick all the links on, mate. But no, I'm, any advice for anyone that wants to start up a repair and build their own amps business? Uh, start small. 
Yeah. Work out what you're doing. Uh, be nice to people. Um, Great advice, mate. If you don't have to be nice to people, you know, if the people are being rude to you, you can... <laughs> never work with them again you know. and when you're on your way up you know and then when you're coming down you can poke them in the eye yeah we get that no it's uh yeah that's no good advice mate no cool mate i love it yeah, i mean just it's, you know listen to people listen mm. to what they want and if it's if it's not if it's not what you want to be doing don't be afraid to say no you yeah. know because people will ask you to fit, fix tellies and and stereos and all kind of things and washing machines and really? car stereos do you, do you do they come um, to you then and say that stuff? Say, can you fix this? Oh, I get car stereos all the time. They hear I'm an amp business. I go, oh, I don't really kind of do car or audio. And then people want me to fix their, what is it like the, what do you call these things? Uh, your your audio visual center, like your five point one surround thing. Really? Uh, honestly, they're Mate. hideous inside. Yeah. And then anything in surface mount has not been designed be repaired nah Uh, so we got kind of got a limit kind of technology wise of about 1990s 2000 yeah yeah. so when they stopped when they stopped putting holes in things and putting components through holes that's when it just started becoming really it needs to go back to the manufacturer yeah yeah get mass reduced we can do we can change caps we can change knobs we can change Mm. this that like a lot of time they serve sort of smart as well and it just gets hideous in there. Yeah, yeah. So no way. Yeah, I'd say don't don't try and compete with the big boys. Don't try and compete with the Chinese. Um yeah, do your own thing really, because yeah. No, I love it, mate. Love it. Oh, thank you for that, mate. And thank you for, for letting me kind of quiz you for kind of an hour on stuff. I've really enjoyed it. I'm uh, I know there's gonna be horrendous amounts of guitar geeks looking at this going I'll just go and check this out. So I'll tell them to drop my name so we can, uh, you know, get you some referrals and stuff because I know you're not busy enough with stuff at the moment. But you've got to do my amps first, right? My stuff first before you do anyone else's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry about all those pros, mate, and all those, you know, important people you've been doing. They're not as important as me. Just just put them to one side, bud. Just, you know. No, uh, I that's mean, cool, mate. We, do, we have like a three... We've got a three-month waiting list at the moment. Yeah. I know um, that. I know that. Don't you worry. <laughs> but uh, we do, we do, we do like a what do you call it? Um, fast tracking services. Yeah. So, so tours need to have stuff in. So they'll, they, they they normally say, oh, we'll have it there Wednesday. What really happens is it gets there, it gets there Friday night last thing. So, and then so you've gone Saturday. from, <laughs> so you've gone from gone from fast track to weekend fast track and you know every time you go up it's it's another increment of how much you're paying per hour yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, I mean, you, you if you need things in a hurry which nobody does at the moment i doubt um then you can fast track things uh yeah oh nice mate no thank you mate thank you so much for i'll make sure all the links are on and thank you much for for joining me mate i will uh Say goodbye to you. Don't go anywhere, though, because I'll chat to you afterwards as well, mate, so I can actually look at you rather than that camera and that stuff. So thank you. That's Johnny Brilliant from Brilliant Amp. So, yeah, say goodbye to everyone, mate. Thank you very much. No worries. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the latest episode of Moving the Spotlight with Johnny, good friend of ours. Uh, fixes all our amps to make us sound decent. Um, so, yeah, join us next time for another episode with someone within the music industry or behind the scenes. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye.